In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And my brothers and sisters, we come to celebrate this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We pray in a special way for the prophetic call in the church and how we're all called to be prophets via our baptism. So as we offer to God our sins, let us offer all for the times that we have shied away from sharing and spreading the faith with one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is a king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sponsor our psalm. Lord, let us see your kindness. 
and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is the salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with this favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor, set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined, in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the tension of his will, so that he might exist for the praise of his glory, who we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today we very much are inspired by the Lord to talk about prophecy and prophets 
And I think this is a very apt thing to talk about these days because in so many ways, I think the prophetic mission in many senses is being co-opted by anger and judgment and extremism. Because the prophets in their day were not extremists. They were not, if you will, falling to political ideologies nor the passing thought of the day. They also were not sent to the masses of people. Rather, they were sent to priests and kings alone. In fact, the prophet Amos today is speaking to the priest at Bethel, which is the king's temple, the king's sanctuary. And he's talking to the priest. He's not talking to crowds and crowds of people. He's talking to the priest. And if you look at so many of the prophets, in fact, just about all of them, they talk to the kings and the priests of their day. Even John the Baptist, the greatest of the prophets, was baptizing people for a baptism of repentance. But any time we hear him preaching is in response to the king's men or to scribes and Pharisees. And the gospel is very clear that John the Baptist is not being imprudent. He is not trying to build up a militia against the priests and kings. Rather, he is trying if you will, to convert the priests and kings, to speak to their hearts and to make it as easy as possible for them to repent and to believe in the gospel, to repent and believe in the Ten Commandments. See, the problem is this. If our mission in being prophets is for the conversion of others, we need to make sure that our means and ways and bedside manner, if you will, is the most conducive possible for that conversion. But if I'm trying to convert someone, let's say, to, to get them to get married, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to spend time talking to them to their hearts. I'm not going to go around and talk to all their neighbors, all their family members, saying what a sinner they are, how bad they are, and get them all riled up and all angry. Because that's not going to lead to their conversion, to, if you will, their repentance and their returning to the gospel. No, talking to them alone. Now, you may invoke a few trusted people in their lives because where two or three are gathered, there the Lord is as well. And if I'm trying to reach out to a brother in the wrong, the gospel is very clear. Talk to them alone first. If that doesn't work, bring two to three reputable people. If that doesn't work, go show yourselves to the priest. And when I'm reaching out to people, it's with them. If that doesn't work, well, we'll bring a few people who are prudent and aren't gossips who are people of good moral standing, who might be able to say things better than I can say them. And if that doesn't work well, there's other resources in the church as well to help them. But for us, we shouldn't, in a sense, rile up someone's anger or make it impossible for them to hear what we are preaching because we ourselves have become, if you will, or made a bigger issue out of things than it actually is. If it is a religious issue, keep it in the religious arena. If it's a different issue, keep it in that arena, being informed by our faith. But I think for us as prophets, it's very important that we realize that being a prophet isn't standing on the soapbox in the middle of town, and granted a bigger town than Abbotsford and Dorchester, and preaching our wares and airing out our dirty laundry. That is not being a prophet. Being a prophet is having precise preaching to individuals or to very limited groups of people. And for all of us here today, we are called to be prophets in our own families, in our own communities, to the people that God has sent us. After Amos was told to be quiet in our first reading, he goes on and preaches for two pages. In fact, this is Amos chapter 7. If you look at chapters 8 and 9, you will see how he preaches against the sin and the paganism of his day to the chief priests. And, of course, there were some people there too, and that's how these words were written down. In our gospel reading, we see how Jesus calls his apostles as he sends them out to take nothing with them and to enter a house and stay there until you leave. That they are being sent out to different communities, yes, but really they're being sent out to individual families. They're not being sent out to talk to hundreds of people. They're being sent out to talk to tens of people. And quite frankly, my brothers and sisters, this is what changes the world. This is what strengthens the church when we know and believe that we are called to the group that God calls us to, not to the masses. Because so many people think, if I'm not preaching to thousands of people, I'm not a prophet. 
or I can't talk to thousands of people, so I'm not going to do anything. When God may be calling us to talk to one or two or five or ten people. And that is something we can all do. I think for us these days, as I mentioned in the beginning of my homily, the office of prophet is being a bit extorted because there's so many people that think that they need to speak the rhetoric of our day. They need to be all angry. They need to whatever to garner lots of followers. My brothers and sisters, Jesus' goal was not to garner lots of followers. He was sent to a small group of apostles, a small group of disciples, and they themselves were sent to small groups of churches around the world that continue to grow, continue to grow, continue to grow. And for us too, oftentimes we're called to one or two people. I'm amazed at my own schedule. You know, we have hundreds of families in this parish. I mean, if you really count, 750, 800 families easily in our parishes, without a doubt. But so often in the daily course of my ministry, I'm called to two families, or this family, or that family, or this person, or that person. And I'm constantly amazed how oftentimes my own ego and my own sense of the peril wants to talk to thousands of people a day when really God's calling me to talk to a few people a day. Yesterday at the food pantry, we had an amazing gift. One, the weather was decent. Oh, that was so nice having decent weather for the first time in a couple of weeks. The second, though, is we had two moms bring their kids. And I cannot tell you what a massive help those little hands were in getting us ready. Because we've been slogging it on and just having a few extra people to put potatoes in bags made all the difference in the world. And by having those few extra people, we got done with everything faster than we ever have before. And it was just an absolutely peaceful food pantry because we weren't scrambling to make the bags and keep collating stuff. It was done before the first car drove up. It's the first time ever that has happened, I believe. And it was all thanks to these six, seven kids with their two moms. And I look at that, the impact a couple of little hands can make, the impact a couple extra people make to making something very doable and something seem absolutely impossible. For me, as a priest, it's very easy to despair these days about the lack of people coming to church. It's very easy for me to fall into some sense of prideful guilt that I am not doing enough. Don't think it's me. I think it's us. If we had a few more hands evangelizing, a few more hands making calls, making visits, a few more people talking about the faith, encouraging people to celebrate the sacraments and live the sacraments, preaching hope, I think it would turn the entire equation, just like the food pantry turned yesterday with a few extra willing hands. And for each of us, my brothers and sisters, I see it in all the communities I've been at, where you have a few people who are just simply being prophets in their own families. It's amazing the difference they make. We have a few people in our communities who have brought 20, 30, 40 people to the Lord. There was one guy, he fortunately just moved away uh, to a different country, but he brought four families in, and I baptized four complete families thanks to his preaching and his love of these families. And they go to church every weekend to this day. And it's an amazing thing that he accomplished. And how did he do it? Praying rosaries, reading the Bible, and speaking the truth to his family members. And it's amazing the power that that has. I think it's something that we forget. See, the devil always wants us to live in the extremes. Absolutely nothing, absolutely everything. Where Jesus calls us to do the prudent, needful thing. The thing that we are so capable of doing the thing that is not overwhelming, the thing that's not going to get us in trouble, the thing that's not going to destroy everything, but really save everything. So as we pray this Mass today, let us pray in a special way that we may have the spirituality once again of St. Paul and the Ephesians. And I will post my public homily where I preach on the Ephesians this weekend. But let us pray that we will have a greater docility to the Holy Spirit to do the needful thing and to recognize the way that we are all called to be prophets in our day. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, we come to this Mass, we profess that faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and the seat of the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we come to this Mass. We offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities. We pray in a special way for Father Altman this weekend that in obedience and charity and faithfulness he may truly be reconciled with our bishop and be able to continue to celebrate the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick and suffering, all those without hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them. We pray in a special way that all of us may have a great heart and to use the gift of our baptismal prophecy to reach out to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voice, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Joseph, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, grace to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind of to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, O Lord, be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You may not have recognized the name for a petition, but Leticia was one of my uh, students in the Diocesan Institute from Eau Claire. And I actually Jesus. was able to. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And let us remember to always be prayerful, that we may also be prophetic when God calls us to. God bless you.